Hi, and welcome back. Let's synthesize some hi-hats. I'll start with white noise from Reaper's stock noise generator, as usual. Then add a Volcano 3. I'll add four filters, then turn the gain all the way down for filter 4 to shut that noise up. We'll need an envelope generator next, which I'll set to trigger from incoming MIDI notes, as usual. And let's modulate the filter gain so we get a burst of noise for every note. I'm going to quickly set up the envelope with a percussive shape, which we'll do for now. I'll come back to this shortly, but first let's set up the basic sound. Obviously, hi-hats are mostly about high frequencies, so you can just use a high-pass filter if you like. But usually I prefer not to have too much content above 10k for drum sounds, so I'm likely to use a low-pass filter as well. The precise frequencies you choose for these filters, and the slope and peak settings, are probably the most important decisions you'll make for your hi-hat sound. But they're also the most obvious and intuitive, so I won't labour the point too much. Lower frequencies give you a darker, crunchier kind of sound, while higher frequencies get crisper and more delicate. You get the idea. Okay, next I'm going to switch the filter routing so that filters 1 and 2 mix together in parallel and then feed filters 3 and 4 in series. I'm going to leave both filters set to the bell shape with no boost or cut. I'm not after that kind of filtering. Instead, I'm going to delay one of the filters by a few milliseconds to add some comb filtering. This creates a distinctive pattern of boosts and cuts, which for some reason makes it sound more metallic at least to my ears. We can modulate the delay time to add some movement if we feel like it, though you'll probably want to keep the modulation pretty subtle. One trick I'm fond of is to set the XLFO to re-trigger on every MIDI note, so the modulation is consistent for every hit. But then select the second step of the XLFO and switch it to random. Now every hi-hat starts exactly the same, but drifts off in random directions as it decays. Now I'm fairly happy with the resulting tone. Just as important, however, in my opinion, is the articulation, by which I mean both velocity sensitivity and the ability to control the open or closed behaviour. If you're using sampled drums, you'll probably have open and closed hi-hats mapped to different keys, sometimes with a half-open version as well. That's not an option in Volcano 3. We could use separate instances for open and closed settings. But then we run into another problem. Traditionally, a closed hi-hat trigger will mute the open hi-hat, as if the drummer had stomped their foot back down on the pedal. In a sampler, you can achieve this with exclusive groups. It's more awkward with two instances of a filter plugin. If we use one instance of Volcano and find a useful way to control the envelope setting, we'll naturally solve that issue. Plus, potentially, we can have more of a sliding scale from closed to open rather than a simple binary or three-way choice. I'm going to show you three different ways to do this. First of all, the simplest but perhaps the least useful. I'm going to set the envelope so that the decay is short and snappy, giving a closed hi-hat articulation, but then set the release much longer to provide an open style decay. Now, if I play longer notes, I get closed hi-hats, but if I play shorter notes, they ring out open. This is more intuitive to play than you might expect. Play with a heavy hand and the hats will be closed, but pull your hand away quickly and they'll ring out undamped. The biggest problem with this method is editing the results. You have to view the notes piano roll style rather than just seeing diamonds on a grid. And shortening note lengths to get a longer hi-hat is hardly intuitive. So next option. The most obvious solution, perhaps, would be to use velocity to control the envelope. So higher velocities were more open, lower velocities stayed closed. This would work fine, 
except I really like to be able to control the dynamics with velocity, and I don't want to lose the ability to add accents and ghost notes. So here's a possibly slightly overcomplicated solution. I'm going to start with an XLFO, then pick an 8-step sequencer preset. I want all steps set to zero, except the last, which I'll set all the way up. Let's have a quick chat about the global glide knob. If this is all the way down, every step will be hard edged, regardless of the individual step setting. If it's all the way up, every step will have full glide, regardless of its individual setting, although the curve setting still makes a difference. But if the global glide is halfway up, the actual glide settings are determined only by the individual step settings. We want this all the way down for the final step, but then all or part of the way up for the one before it, to create a ramp up from zero to full modulation. We haven't finished with this XLFO yet, but I'll come back to it in a moment. First, I'm going to set up the envelope modulation. Let's start by setting the decay to create a short closed hi-hat. Then copy that setting to the release as well. Then I'll modulate both of them from the step sequencer. Now the hi-hats open up at the end of each bar. And I can tune the modulation depth to set how long the open hi-hats decay for. Don't forget to match the decay and release modulation as well. OK, next step. Let's set the XLFO to run really, really slowly. Actually, zero hertz would be optimum for this trick, but we'll get as close as we can. Then set it to re-trigger on every MIDI note, so that it restarts for every hi-hat. But now the sequence never gets anywhere near the end. But we can still control where the sequence starts each time it resets, by changing the XLFO phase parameter. I'm going to modulate this with velocity, and because the velocity modulation is bidirectional and goes negative as well as positive, that means I'm going to start by setting the phase to 0 0.5 halfway along the sequence. Now let's add the phase modulation, and I'm going to set the depth around 0 0.07. Now the XLFO functions like a kind of lookup table. Low velocity hits give us quiet, closed hats. Medium velocity hits give us louder closed hi-hats. We can get to loud closed hi-hats as well. Only the very highest velocities get us to steps 7 and 8, where the hats open up. This method is a little fiddly to set up, but once done it's reasonably intuitive to play from a MIDI controller, and also quite easy to edit afterwards. The biggest issue is perhaps that all your open hi-hats have to be near full volume. So the final method I'll suggest is a bit simpler to set up. I'll just add another MIDI modulator and use the mod wheel. Of course you could use a different controller if you prefer. This gives you full control over the openness of the hats and the volume independently. It makes it easy to gradually open up the hats to create a building energy, as a rock drummer might. Note that you can change the controller curve to change the feel of this, and make it easier to ride those halfway hits. What's less easy with this method is creating intricate funky patterns with both open and closed hits. Coordinating both hands for this can be tricky, and you'll probably have to edit the MIDI to get it just right. But editing is quick and easy. And it's nice to be able to determine exactly how open an open hi-hat should be. Alright, that's enough hi-hat. Let's talk about shaker type sounds. I'll usually start with just a bandpass filter, somewhere in the upper mid-range. This is modulated with an envelope, as usual. But I want the envelope attack to be a bit softer this time. And the decay and release can be a bit more linear and less snappy. The opposite of what I'd normally do for a drum sound. Now I'm going to load up a MIDI modulator and set it to velocity. But I'm not going to modulate the gain with it, at least not yet. First I'm going to link to the envelope attack time and invert the modulation so that higher velocities mean a faster, harder attack. 
So this is way too much, of course. The modulation depth needs to be set really low, as tiny changes to the attack time make a big difference to the result. And it's easier to judge this if low velocity hits aren't really quiet as well, which is why I set this up first. Now it's safe to link it to the master output gain as well, and maybe turn down the depth a touch, as the attack time modulation is already doing a lot of the work. I often like to also link the velocity to the filter cutoff, just a little bit, so that louder hits get slightly brighter. But shakers aren't so predictable in my experience, so I'll often also add a random XLFO, set it to re-trigger for every MIDI note, and add a tiny touch of randomness as well. Things like shakers often work well panned away from the middle of the mix to add width and create a stereo sound stage. But a nice alternative might be to adjust the ring around the filter cutoff instead, or as well, to offset the left and right filter cutoffs slightly. This can create much more of a sense of space and depth than simple panning. And if you're worried about mono compatibility, don't be. Nothing alarming will happen in mono. Okay, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. <laughs>